Hey, Lori. Is David back there actually working? Oh, can you see him? <laughs> He's getting ready to. <laughs> some breakfast. George can see you. He's <laughs> Hi, Daytuana. Hey, how are you all? Good, how are you? Good. Christina. Hey, good morning, Lindsay. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. How are you doing today? Doing well, doing well. I feel like we're getting the hang of this Zoom thing just in, just in time. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> well, I'm glad we have a county item first, and that way, hopefully by the time I get back from court, you all won't even have noticed that I had to step away for a second. <laughs> yes, I think that'll be just fine. Perfect. Not a problem at all. We do need our other county commissioners though. <laughs> Hi, Rick. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Amanda is um Good morning, Sandy. Good morning. How are you, Lindsay? Good. How are you? Doing great. Thanks. Great. That's Lindsay's fault. Yeah, but you're not. I am. They can't see you. Hmm? <laughs> they can't see you. Your camera was turned off at the top. Hi, Kim. Hey, good morning. Good morning. See, if I have my video turned off, this is better. Awesome. Looks more like me then. Doesn't my little character come up on it? Um, I didn't see it, but so oh, boom, yes, because that would have been really cool. <laughs> <laughs> it does for all of my other ones. Um, well, now that we have you guys here, George, we do have a quorum for the county. Oh, good. Okay. You want me to go ahead and start the meeting then? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, welcome to the June Knox County Historic Zoning Commission meeting. This meeting is uh, broadcast on several television stations, so please remember to speak clearly and directly uh, when called upon. Uh, please limit your presentations to five minutes, and all those who are going to speak, um, please affirm what I do after the following statement. I solemnly affirm that the testimony I'm about to give shall be the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Um, when you are called upon to speak, uh, please uh, state your name and address uh, for the record. 
and any appeals of the historic zoning commission decisions may be made to chancery court uh, within 60 days of this meeting. Can we get a roll call with the county, please? Yes, Bill Belser. Present. Mike Crowder is an excused absence. George Ewart. Here. Kim Eisenberg. Here. And Scott Smith is also an excused absence. You do have a quorum. Thank you very much. And uh, on such historic occasion that we have back-to-back -back meetings, uh, we got meeting notes that are fresh in everyone's mind. Um, can I, has everyone had a chance to look over those? Yes. And yes. if I could get a motion to uh, for approval. Make the motion um, to approve. What are we approving the agenda? The, the, the minutes. Oh, the minutes, sorry, I'm on the wrong page. Who's, who's controlling? I'm not controlling. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Yes. Uh, okay, let's aye. see. The minutes are approved. Let's go to staff uh, for uh, a report on our case. Okay, okay. okay. great. Um, so our one case today, we're back to the same property where we were last, uh, last month. This is at uh, 10817 3rd Drive in the village of Concord. You can see the uh, whole property there on your screen. Um, and what Mr. Abel is proposing, and he's on this call, so I'll let him also speak, but I'll briefly just touch on it. Um, Mr. Abel is proposing the modifications to this outbuilding you see here. This is his carport. Um, and he's proposing the enclosure of the existing side gable carport, um, which is that north section, and then an eight foot addition to the rear of the outbuilding. He is proposing some um, to enclose this carport with two garage doors. So you can see the drawings that were provided by Mr. Abel here. Um, he's going to enclose it with two garage doors um, to, that will feature windows that match the um, existing house and then also a fiber cement lap siding. And then there will be a rear addition on the carport that has a sort of shed roof uh, extension and it'll have an asphalt shingle roof to match the existing. So the applicable design guidelines here are the Village of Concord design guidelines for outbuildings. And then also um, under infill and new development, it just notes that for garages and outbuildings, their size and construction should use materials that correspond to the original primary buildings on the lot. Um, so just briefly, there's the uh, images of the garage. Here's the existing context. Um, and you can see it's um, where it's located here. It's set behind the property. So staff's findings are that this carport dates to approximately 1990, um, the, featuring materials that complement the existing house. And it's actually set approximately 80 feet from Olive Road on its closest point. Um, the proposed materials, including the lap siding and garage doors with windows that reflect the divided light windows on the existing house, those are appropriate. Um, and the fiber cement siding would, should, should match the exposure of the existing siding. Um, and then the additional extension on the rear of the carport won't detract from the property's <coughs> overall historic integrity. And the applicant has noted that they're also planting additional vegeta vegetation around that corner of their property, um, sort of in this, this direction. Um, so that will help make the carport even less visible from the public right of way. So staff's recommending approval of this work as proposed. Thank you very much, Lindsay. Um, is there any opposition? Um, Mr. Abel, would you like to, to add anything to this? See on the call. Should be. Am I unmuted now? Yes, okay. we can hear you. Go okay. Um, no, I don't have anything to add. Um, like I said, it. we are certainly, we love our home and the historical value of it and match it, so. Mr. Abel, I, I'm assuming you live at 10817 3rd Drive, correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay, thank you. Continue, please. Uh, that, that's it. Um, okay, thank you very much. Uh, turn it over to, uh, Commission, anybody have any comments or any discussion? I, I think it's very uh, appropriate for the property. It's 
it definitely actually I think it'll improve it because you won't have to see all of the um, items inside of the building. So right. I think it's a good move. Well, can I get a motion? I make the motion to um, um, to go with staff's recommendation. Can I get a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 And then even though- we got to do just, roll call? Yeah, just even though there are three of y'all, we'll do a quick roll call, okay. Laura, we'll call it. Okay, Bill Belser. Aye. George Ewart. Aye. And Kim Eisenberg. Aye. Okay. Motion carried. Motion passed. Uh, congratulations, Mr. Abel. And thank you all for uh, thanks, coming everybody. together and meeting with us today. Thank you. Thanks. We don't have to adjourn, correct? The last time we were on here, they said that once the, the meeting's done, we don't have to do the appropriate adjourn. Our business is complete. George, that's, that's correct. George, that's correct. I'll, this is Christina with the city law department. Once yeah. your agenda runs out of items, you can just announce that the meeting is adjourned. Okay. All right, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank Evel. you all. <laughs> I appreciate Thanks. you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I hope everybody's in place for our city meeting. Somehow my screen is. Good morning, everyone. Screen, can you hear me? All screen showing yes, Ferris, we can hear you. Great, thank you. Um, okay, there we go. I'm trying to push the button that gets everybody's face. <laughs> I've only got four four people I can see on my screen. Yeah, okay. it it might not give you everybody as uh, okay. All right. As we're sharing screens. Well, as far as we know, is everybody that we're expecting on board here? Did we see them yet? I'll, we'll do the roll call, of course, but um, if we're, we're ready to get started, we'll jump right in. Yes. All right. Welcome to the June 18th meeting of the Knoxville Historic Zoning Commission. This meeting is broadcast on several TV stations, so please remember to speak clearly and directly into the microphone. We'll now have a roll call to see if we have a quorum. All right. Rick Blackburn. Present. Bart Carey. Here. Casey Fox. Here. Ferris Ede. Here. Daisha Lundy. Here. Lori Matthews. Here. Daytuana Mitchell. Here. Sandy Swilly. Here. Stanton Webster. Here. All right. You have a quorum. Excellent. If, if you wish to speak on an item, please stand or in this case, sit now and answer with I do to the following affirmation. I solemnly affirm that the testimony I'm about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Maybe we have no um, applicants or neighborhood reps today, but uh, oh, there, maybe they're yeah. not turned on, but we'll get to that, I guess, as they come come up later. Thank you. We ask that all speakers please limit their presentations to five minutes. We also ask that the speakers please sign in at the podium by legibly putting their names and addresses. Um, appeals of any HCC decision may be made to Chancery Court within 60 days of the day of this meeting. And we uh, hope you've had a chance to look over the minutes. We need to, uh, we need to have a, approval of those minutes or any questions that may uh, be out there for those. Move to approve. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Thank you. I guess that moves us right into the level ones and um, okay. we'll keep rolling. Awesome. Um, so the level one COAs that were approved since the last oh meeting God, include um, eight. Uh, one in color, I did the rest black and white. Hey. 811 Eleanor Street and Fourth and Gill. Um, this project was the replacement of a non-original front door um, with a half-light two-panel two-panel vertical door that is fiberglass and smooth to finish and will be painted to reflect the color scheme of the house. Um, 
The next project was at 712 Grad Street. Um, this was the replacement in kind of nine first story windows. So the applicant actually hired a window restoration specialist to come and repair the windows, but um, we have documentation on hand that the windows were significantly deteriorated beyond repair. Um, the applicant submitted specifications for a Pella Architect Reserve um, double hung two over one wood windows that match the existing in size, pane division, exterior depth width, and profile. Um, the next project was the masonry repointing on the north and south elevations of the house at 1026 Lettrell Street, um, and then the removal and replacement in kind of concrete porch caps and some concrete porch steps. And those will be reconstructed with the same uh, size, scale, and design. At 224 Leonard Place, this one was the renewal of an expired COA that was issued in July of 2016 um, that involved porch work, basically the replacement of a non-original wood porch balustrade with um, two by two wood balusters and a chamfered top rail. This had again been issued in July 2016. Um, and then finally at 311 West Glenwood Avenue, um, this project included repair and replacement in kind in portions of a front and then the second story rear balustrade. Um, the front porch got new wood newel posts that will match the existing in size material and design. Um, and then the new wood balusters that will match um, the existing in, in size material and design, including a fluted detail. And that's it. Thank you. Um, that'll take us into the level twos. I don't know if anybody else is, <laughs> I'm working off two devices and, um, well, never mind. I, I think I can, I think I can follow along with something. I got, I got a fault and back to what I had yesterday, Lindsay, but I'll keep working on that. I mean, I, I okay. Can, um, well, let me know if there's anything we can connect you with. I can okay. say we've got, the necessary people on the call and everything. So I think we're set to go. We've got the first applicant and the neighborhood representatives. So. Okay, thank you. Um, just let us know, Bart, if we can get All right. something. Um, okay, so the first project is at 1009 Gratz Street. Um, this is 6B20HZ. The property in question is a, well, the main house is a colonial revival cottage that is contributing to the historic district. Um, the structure under review is a side gable brick masonry outbuilding that's located to the rear of the property. So I'm gonna just show you this photo of what um, the outbuilding actually looks like. Um, the work involved, this is the after the fact review to alterations to this outbuilding. Um, as you can see on the photo on your left, there was a large tree stump at the Southeast corner, um, which significantly contributed to deterioration of that outbuilding's brick masonry wall. Um, the applicant has removed the south half of the brick walls and then supported the existing roof um, under six square wood columns. They are four six by sixes and two four by fours that are all unfinished wood beams. Um, the applicant has installed a new exterior wall and that barn style sliding door that you can see in the middle there. Um, and then the project also includes the construction of this wood deck that's on top of um, what was the existing floor and the installation of those gutters as well. So the applicable design guidelines here, the fourth and gill guidelines, um, some relevant ones are just noting that um, you know, carriage houses, work buildings, or simple one-story garages are appropriate in the Fourth and Gill uh, Historic District. Their size and construction should use materials that correspond to the original primary buildings on the lot. Um, and then here's just a brief uh, sort of rendering that the applicant has provided of, of what was completed here. Um, so some of the findings so this outbuilding, it's dated to 1969 on the tax assessor's website. However, some of the details like the load-bearing masonry construction and the two over two horizontal pane windows indicate a somewhat earlier construction than 1969, um, most likely in the, in the mid-century 1950s. Um, we couldn't really verify that on historic aerials because that large tree um, was really covering it. The, it's not an outbuilding original to the historic district, but it has reached the 50-year threshold. Um, Modifications to this outbuilding don't detract from the integrity of the primary house or from the district. Um, 
This review is after the fact, so this work has already been completed. Um, and the applicant has effectively created a porch space on the south half of this building using these unfinished wood beams and wood decking above the existing concrete floor. So the guidelines recommend that secondary structures should demonstrate a size, construction, and materials that correspond to the primary buildings on the lot. Um, and they also note that porches should employ details that present a visually appropriate appearance for the historic context. You know, these guidelines do apply primarily to houses, but the intent is to present a sort of consistent appearance throughout the property. So um, due to the placement of the outbuilding, um, it, only the south half where the porches is visible from the right of way. Um, you know, and staff has noted just that while adding unnecessary embellishments to the outbuilding porch, it, it, it's not necessary, but some additional finishes might help in improving the visual effect of the porch from the public right of way, um, including obscuring those exposed metal fasteners that you can see at the top of the beams with just a simple wood cornice or trim, um, maybe painting the beams or better aligning those columns so that they're actually equidistant and placed, as the, placed in the corners as you can see them shown in the rendering here. So staff is recommending approval of the work as proposed with the condition that the newly created porch um, could receive some additional detail to present a more finished appearance and that could be approved by staff. Thank you, Lindsay. Is the applicant on board today? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. This is Mike MCGS, uh, 1009 Grant. Okay, would you like to, um, would you like to elaborate or uh, address commission? Uh, no, I think it was, it was covered thoroughly. Um, I would like to have kept it as it was. I wish I had a picture of the inside. There was a, there was house jack holding it up. On the on the inside of the structure, so uh, that the stump that was going to the top of the wall was really bringing the structure down. So this was a an attempt to revitalize without um, changing the original uh, look of it. Okay, um, is there any um, opposition out there today? Or maybe a, it'll see if the neighborhood rep wants to weigh in. Aaron is here. Aaron's on board. Yes. Can you hear us, Aaron? Maybe your audio is not on. No, I think. <laughs> well, I don't know what we, <laughs> yes, we have to move Hold on, on to commission. Moment. Okay, Aaron, we need to unmute his phone. Gotcha. Okay, Aaron, are you, are you there? All right, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. <laughs> um, this is Aaron Tweeter, 925 Eleanor Street, representing Fourth and Gill. Um, the, I didn't get any comments back on this particularly. It is a, it is an interesting building, but again, it wasn't listed in the original uh, inventory of the neighborhood. And I think probably given the state of it, the applicant could have justified demolishing the whole thing. So this is probably a nice, at least sort of archeological compromise to that. Um, uh, I think, the neighborhood, the, the the recommendation I sent to the neighborhood and the one that nobody disagreed with was just that we completely agree with staff's recommendation and it, with a few aesthetic modifications, nobody has any concerns about this application. Thank you. Um, commission, any discussion? As I review this, I mean, the, the, to me, the most objectionable item is the fact that the ceiling is open framing and there's no ceiling underneath it. And traditionally, there would have been a ceiling, I would think. And the soffits would have been covered up like the original soffit would have been. And the columns would have not been exposed wood would have been painted. And like you noted, Lindsay, the bracket, metal brackets would have also been covered up. 
So I would like to suggest that the aesthetic modifications that you're looking at would incorporate those elements as well. Okay. And I, I hope that can be found in a motion then. <laughs> no. If there are no other comments, I can go ahead and make a motion. Yes, yes sir. Um, regarding the application in front of us, uh, I make a motion to approve for staff recommendation and to include among the aesthetic uh, improvements that the columns are painted, the metal brackets are covered up, that the soffit original to the house uh, be repaired and continued on and uh, behind the gutters and that the ceiling is installed and painted. All right, we have a motion. A second. We have a motion in a second, and we will have a roll call for our vote. Was that Commissioner Matthews that second? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, Rick Blackburn. Aye. Bart Carey. Aye. Casey Fox. Aye. Ferris Eid. Here. Yes. Daisha <laughs> Lundy. Aye. Lori Matthews. Yes. Daytuana Mitchell? Aye. Sandy Swilly? Aye. Stanton Webster? Stanton Webster? Aye. Wonderful. Right. carries. Thank you. We have a unanimous congratulations on, uh, on your project, and we'll move on to the next one. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. And thanks, Mike and Aaron, for. Um, being here and I'll follow up with you, Mike, today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, okay, the next project is at 134 Leonard Place. This is in Old North. This begins um, the remainder of our projects, which are all in Old North you know, this month. So this is at 134 Leonard Place, and the scope of work here is the construction of an outbuilding. So um, this is um, going to be an eight foot wide by 10 foot deep storage shed that will be placed in the southwest corner of the property. Um, the shed will have a side gable roof um, clad in composite shingle um, with a nine over 12 pitch that is intended to match the pitch of the existing house. There'll be a six inch wood fascia board and eave overhangs that are incorporated into it. And then the shed will have a be clad in four inch woodlop siding with four inch corner boards and paired doors, which will be four feet wide by uh, six feet, eight inches tall. And the door will have a cross bracing and then the single panes above. Um, the applicable design guidelines are the old North Knoxville design guidelines. Um, and just to give you a quick uh, view, there's the house. And so the shed will be visible somewhat from the uh, public right of way as it will be located right behind the house in that location. You can see some pictometry views of the property there. Um, and so the staff findings are that uh, basically the, the placement of the shed is appropriate. It's proposed to be placed at the rear of the primary building on the lot with five foot setbacks from the side and rear property lines. It will be minimally visible from Leonard Place. Um, the shed is simple in design. It's modest in its size and massing, and it could be removed without any effect, effect on the primary residence. And then finally, the shed uses materials um, that reflect the existing house and meet the design guidelines, including the nine over 12 roof pitch, the four inch wood lap siding with four inch corner boards, a composite shingle roof and an eave overhang. So the materials and design of the shed are appropriate. And so staff is recommending approval of the work as proposed. All right, thank you. Is the applicant present? Hi, I'm Amanda Tompkins. Thank you. Can you give us your uh, address, please? Yes, 134 Leonard Place. Thank you. Um, do you have anything you want to add today to what we've heard so far? Um, no, I think Lindsay did a great job, but I'm happy to answer any questions you all have. Okay, I, I think in, in the description, it does mention a six inch Eve overhang which I assume is what the, is that what the house is, Lindsay? Sorry. Is that, um, it, it looks the, like the, the, eave, the eave overhang is one foot as shown in this uh, rendering. Well, the gable, the, the, the picture we have on the 
on the gables that shows no overhang. And mm -hmm. I mean, that, maybe that's just the, the drawing program, but I want to make sure that that does match the house as well. Um, the upright photo we see right now doesn't show any overhang. So is that, is that okay? Is that something you can comply with? Yes, we can do that. Do you see what we're talking about there? What's are you, yeah, maybe you're, uh, yeah. the bottom picture shows an overhang, but I'm assuming you would like the overhang to go both ways, not just one way. Just like your house is, yes. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it, you typically don't have typically the gable. There's a barge wrapper that goes out on either side. It's a, or in this case, maybe it's just trim, but if it looks like to make it look like the house is, I guess, what we're talking about. Okay. The same de same detail in the gables. Okay, all right. Um, is the uh, is there any opposition to, to this application? Okay, uh, neighborhood rep again. Oh, I'm sorry. We're not, we're not, we got a different re neighborhood rep. Is uh, James? Yes. James, are you present? I had seen his name early on. Is he, is he muted? Nope. Hmm. I, he, I had seen his name early on and we, we do, it would be very beneficial to have the neighborhood participant in this particular call, but I do have written comments from him as well. And with this one, um, Mr. Pierce wrote, based on materials, location, size, and style of the proposed accessory structure, we should support staff's recommendation for approval. Excellent, okay. All right, um, we'll go to commission. Let's see if there's questions or issues. I don't know. I make a motion um, to approve based on staff recommendations. I second. We have a motion and a second. I didn't get who the second was. Laura, do you have that? Was yeah. that Commissioner Mitchell? Yes, it was. Thank you. Okay, okay we perfect. Have, we have a motion and a second. We'll have a roll call for a vote. All well, right. Question first, if you don't mind, uh, discussion. Uh, Lori, did you want to have the overhang also being on the gable face as well as the uh, yes, eaves sorry, office? Yes, yes. Sorry, we could have uh, incorporate Bart's comments in that, that the uh, overhang matched the house and the gables. Okay, thank you. We have thank a modified you, motion. Okay. All Ray right. Burn? Yay. A. <laughs> Bart Carey? Aye. Casey Fox? Yes. Aye. Ferris Eid? Yes. Daisha Lundy? Aye. Lori Matthews? Yes. Daytuana Mitchell? Aye. Sandy Swilly? Aye. Stanton Webster? Aye. Motion carries. Very good. Thank you. Congratulations. All right. Moving along. Okay. So the next project is at 1017 Thompson Place, also in Old North Knoxville. Um, this uh, is a contributing resource to the Old North Knoxville Historic District and the local overlay. Um, the property is a Craftsman House constructed in approximately 1910. Um, I'm gonna show you some photos of it before we get through. So the um, scope of work of it is the exterior rehabilitation of a house that was damaged by the fire. This house had a significant fire in January of 2020. And so the applicant is proposing a roof reconstruction um, wall framing and siding, and then the replacement of damaged or missing second story windows. Um, and so you can see here, there are just some photos that are provided by the applicant showing some fire deterioration. And I'll come back through these as we talk about the scopes of work that are involved, but um, there were some pretty significant fire damage to the second story, especially. So 
Um, the scope of work that's being proposed is the reconstruction of the roof to match this original jerkin head roof line. Um, the applicant is proposing to use the same materials, so the asphalt shingle cladding on the, the sloped sections of the roof, and then the um, similar sort of rubber material on the flat roof line. The applicant says, has noted that they will uh, reconstruct the soffit and the fascia to match the original um, with wood painted to match the existing structure. Um, as you can see in this photo, there are two brick masonry chimneys um, it, that were uh, placed on the structure um, and they were significantly damaged in the fire. There was one chimney that collapsed um, completely and the second chimney had sort of partially collapsed on the inside. Um, this, the previous property owner reached out pretty early on with documentation from their fire insurance company that was recommending that the second chimney just be completely removed because it would be uh, dangerous for the contractors on site. So the two chimneys are, are, are gone, um, at least from the roof line, you can kind of see in that one. Um, so the applicant is requesting to not reconstruct these chimneys um, as quote, they would not be in use anymore and would be a costly repair. Um, also involved in the scope of work is the replacement of windows on the property. So the applicant has stated the intent to replace the windows with windows to match the original and they've provided material specs for a, a, a Geldwin brand wood windows. Um, however, the ones pr proposed by the applicant are these double hung two over two wood windows and um, the existing windows on the facade are uh, four light, three adjoining four light wood casement windows. Um, the, another element of work here is the applicant is proposing to enclose this second story door with a window instead, and you can see it kind of drawn here. Um, the second story door had previously led to that flat roof porch, which had no, which had no railing, which created some major codes issues. And then finally included in the scope of work is the replacement of the missing wood lap siding that will be replaced with new wood lap siding and corner boards to match the existing. Um, so the applicable design guidelines, again, are the Old North design guidelines, including roofs, windows, and wood wall coverings. Um, and just, we can revisit this for sure, but just to review some of the staff findings. The house was damaged by the fire, as I said. Um, the roof collapsed. Um, the second story framing, siding, and windows were removed. And then, you know, we're missing the chimneys at the end of this. So the work does involve restoration of these items that were damaged and removed by the fire. Um, the jerkin head roof line is a character defining feature of the house that's noted specifically in the National Register nomination. Um, reconstruction of the roof should match the original roof line with the cladding materials, eave overhangs, and the soffit and fascia details to match the existing house. Um, Guidelines also recommend repairing or replacing roof details, including chimneys and attic vents. And these two brick masonry chimneys are unique features. You know, they're evenly spaced with one on each side of the roof slope, and they have a simple sort of corbeling detail at the top. We have sufficient photo documentation of them through Google and other photographs. And then, so staff is recommending that the chimneys and then also those wood louvered vents on the facade should be restored in kind. Um, regarding the second story door, the, that facade door um, is likely a non-historic alteration. It was installed, probably installed when the house became apartments because it was apartments. Um, and it leads to that first story porch roof. I'll, I'll click us back there. Um, it's right there in the middle. It leads to the first story porch roof, which doesn't have a railing, which is required by code. And then, um, you know, we have no historic evidence presented that a railing was ever present. So staff thinks that, that removal of the second story door and replacement with a window there in the middle is appropriate if the window um, complements the house's overall design, including trim details, materials, and window mountain pattern. Um, the, three, uh, the three wood louvered vents should be restored to the facade. Um, and then regarding the windows, you know, the applicant has provided several potential window specifications and wants to restore to what was previously there. Um, the facade windows were three adjoining four light wood casement windows surrounded by wood trim and those should be replaced in kind. Um, and additional information should be supported re regarding windows proposed for the rear elevation. As you can sort of see on that photograph, it's a little hard to tell um, what specifically windows were there. Um, and so staff's requesting that more 
information regarding the, the rear elevation windows be submitted. Um, and then finally, replacement of the missing sections of wood clabbered siding should reflect the exposure, overlap, and dimensions of the rest of the house. So staff is recommending approval of the work as proposed with the following conditions, that the chimneys be reconstructed with dimensions, materials, placement, and design to match the uh, previously original chimneys. The three adjoining wood louvered vents be restored in their original location. Um, specifications on the second story window that's gonna replace the door be submitted to staff for approval. And then um, the second story facade windows be restored in kind with those uh, two sets of three adjoining wood casement windows. Um, and you know, staff's requesting that final specifications of these windows be submitted. And then finally, um, additional information on dimensions, placement, and design of the rear elevation windows be submitted to staff. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, if our applicant is present, please give us your name and address. I do not see the applicant present here. The applicant, and I'll just note that the applicant who um, has been preparing the application is the contractor. It's Jim Keener of Airway Construction and Restoration. Um, and Mr. Keener was submitting this application on behalf of the property owner. Do we know if he had plans to be here or, or not be here today? He said he'd intended to, um, but. Okay. Yeah, because there's definitely some things we need to talk about on yeah. this one. Um, okay. Is, um, well, I'm not sure we should try to reach out, but is there, a, it, I guess we just go to, a, to see if there's opposition to this or um, any discussion from any other neighbors? So how about our, uh, well, we, James, same neighborhood rep. So unless James, if you come on board. I have a written um, statement. Okay. So uh, Mr. Pierce noted, it is preferred that detailed dimensioned plans be submitted to commission for review. Um, he is also recommending that frequent city inspections should be required to ensure that this reconstruction matches the ori original. And um, that was something that I heard from resounding from the neighborhood. Um, they, would, they would just like to see that, you know, the city bu building staff comes out and continues to check that this work is being done to, to reconstruct to match the original, um, regardless of the COA that's issued. Um, and then Mr. Pierce said, we should, we should support staff's requirements for the chimneys to be rebuilt, working or not, based on their character defining contribution to the structure. And then we should support staff's requirements for window and vent installations. Okay. Um, a, a, from what you just read, a question comes to mind from me is, is uh, do we have, um, we were calling on the city inspection office to, uh, um, do they typically involve themselves with our historic guidelines or that they're, they're, that's not part of code? Do they have the, uh, I don't know, say authority, but is that how, is that something new? Is that something we commonly do? Is ask, them, ask them to monitor historic restoration? Hi, Bart. This is Peter Ahrens, uh, Director hey, of Plans Review and Inspections. If there is a certificate of appropriateness that's issued, we, we generally, as a, as a policy, work with Lindsay and ensure that the plans submitted are in compliance with the COA. And if the plans are approved in compliance with the COA, the inspectors um, ensure that whatever's on the plans is, is indeed installed. If there's any question, we, we definitely reach out to Lindsay. And there are times that we bring her out on site um, to ensure compliance. Very good. So, so hence the reason the request to have more detailed plans so you have something to, with, with which to monitor, I guess. Um, we have photos of the previous construction, but we don't really have detailed plans that you carry with you into the site to, to be able to monitor with. So I guess that makes sense. Okay, thank you. 
Um, I think we definitely have some points to discuss with the applicant, or, or I guess we, we, if it's in our, if we have a motion that, um, I guess let's go, let's go to the commission now and just let, let's discuss this. But I think these chimneys are a big deal um, that we need to weigh in on. Commission. Nobody wants to throw it out there, huh? I'm back. What? Okay. I think Sorry, I, I support I, the I, chimneys I, being reconstructed. It's so much a part of the profile of the house. Uh, yeah, Commissioner Webster here. I definitely think the um, uh, chimneys are character defining features um, that, um, you know, would be, seems like it would be a, a pretty big loss um, to not include those. If we could scroll to the picture that shows, um, it's this, it shows the second story that's demolished, uh, well, the roof's gone. That chimney right there on the right is it obviously, ex I think that still exists. It was, it was brought down from its peak down to that level. Is that where it exists right now, Lindsay? I'm not, I'm not certain. Um, I know that they were concerned about the, the integrity of the chimney for workers being underneath it, especially. Um, right. So these, these photos were provided to me by the application deadline. So this is, um, I assume what was in at least yeah. the beginning of the month. Yeah, in visiting the site yesterday, I couldn't really see, um, I couldn't really see the, if, the, if, that was, if that chimney was still there, but I, I might, I think, what came down was what was above the ceiling line that was damaged more by the fire. And if both those chimneys are standing, which would be a good question for the applicant if you were here, but if both those chimneys are standing to the extent that one is, um, it's a whole lot different situation to build on than if you're starting in the cellar and it grade and having to build the chimney back. Um, and I think it mentioned it could be false. We're looking for the aesthetic, not necessarily the function, but this is a case where form definitely follows function and the, and the two chimneys were part of the, it, I agree that part of the overall look of the house. It could even be framed from that ch existing chimney up with, with wood and, and plywood and, and um, house wrap and that could be, you know, um, artificial brick to, you know, this lick and stick, whatever you call it now, the, 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 to be built relatively inexpensively um, and flashed the same way a chimney would be to, to get the look. But um, I, I would assume that the insurance, <laughs> that the insurance would cover the damage to those chimneys just like it would to the rest of the house. I don't know, we, we can't get into the, those economics maybe, but um, I, I agree that the chimneys are important, but we don't, we don't know the whole story. Yeah, the one thing that I would be concerned with is from a structural standpoint is the stability of being able to put a chimney that in today's world needs to be reinforced differently than the way these non-reinforced brick chimneys were constructed a long time ago. And can the new one rest on the old one, whether it's wood framed or concrete block with brick around it or whatever the case may be. So what I would suggest is if we're going to request that the chimneys are reconstructed, that the structural engineer is involved to review them, to, to verify their stability, and that building code is, a, is involved to review that um, construction. Okay, good point. And I'm fine with uh, requiring drawings which are to scale to show the reconstruction as well. That would only make sense as well. Can we can we see the the before pictures before fire pictures? I guess the very first ones again. Yeah. Uh, the, that's those aren't necessarily scale drawings, but. Um,
can we go back to now to the, the same image of the fi after a fire? I'll show you the okay. ones that. I well, just... the, the, the detail's gone. Okay, the overhangs are mm -hmm. are gone. Yeah, the entire roof is missing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. All right. If there's no further discussion, does anyone want to make a motion? <laughs> I'll go ahead and make a motion. Um, the, my, my motion is a uh, recommendation uh, per staff approval or per staff recommendations uh, for the work with the following contingencies that number one, to scale drawings are submitted showing the work to be reconstructed relevant to the roof, the elevation, the windows uh, the ch and the chimneys, all, all elements that are to be reconstructed. And number two, that the chimneys are desired to be reconstructed per staff recommendations, uh, but that is pending a review by a structural engineer to verify the adequacy of the existing chimneys or the, the leftover component of the chimneys slash fireplaces to support that load. Um, the chimney does not have to be all brick. It could be a stud, stud constructed or concrete block or any other type of construction they wish to use as long as the facade and finish has the same brick appearance as the original. Okay, we have a very detailed motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Is that you, Lori? Lori, uh, yes. You. So we have a motion and a second. Um, we'll go to our roll call. Rick Blackburn. Aye. Art Carey. Aye. Casey Fox. Aye. Ferris Eid. Yes. Daisha Lundy. Aye. Lori Matthews. Yes. Daytuana Mitchell. Aye. Sandy Swilly. Aye. Stanton Webster. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Very good. Moving along. Our next one, Lindsay. Sorry, muting issues. Um, okay, so our next one, this is at 428 East Scott Avenue. So this is the property that we saw in the workshop at the end of last month's meeting. Um, and I'm gonna touch briefly on this, but we have the designers on the call, I know, and so I'm gonna let them get a little bit more into the details. Um, this scope of work is the exterior rehabilitation for an adaptive reuse of both the circa 1927 commercial building with that rear block um, warehouse to, um, on the rear addition that dates to the 1960s. So the scope of work involves just in general enlarging the existing windows on the side elevations, um, the restoration of the historic storefront, adding new windows and secondary entrances on the secondary elevations, and then repair to um, existing siding material on the rear um, addition. So on the facade, and again, I'll just be brief here. Um, the facade is gonna receive new storefront systems um, on each side flanking uh, paired single light doors that are topped by a transom. There will be a flat metal awning that extends the length of the storefront. Um, and then the scope of work also includes those decorative planters you can see indicated there. Um, and again, we'll come back to this. There's the site plan though that you, you can see on the front, the uh, existing 1927 building, and then the 1960s addition to the rear. So, um, and again, there's the facade. So on the uh, west side elevation, I'm gonna get to these, yes. So on the west side elevation, um, the applicant is proposing the removal of the non-historic clear story windows on the second story of that 1927 structure. Um, and those will be replaced with a double hung sash window for egress. 
And then on the 1960s section, this is the installation of three storefront systems on that first story that are glazed doors that are topped by um, tall single light transom windows. And then the installation of um, additional double hung sash windows in place of those existing industrial windows. On the east elevation, um, this includes, again, the removal of those clear story windows, and they'll, they'll be enlarged to be double hung windows. Um, and then, the, again, three storefront systems on the first story of the 1960s section. And then on both, um, both side and rear elevations of the 1960s section, there will be repair um, to, the, to the cladding. This gunite cladding that's deteriorating will be removed, and the exterior is going to be recovered in stucco. And then on the rear elevation, the uh, metal staircase will be removed and a non-historic rear door will be removed. And then a single light glazed door um, with a transom. And um, what I have noted is a balcony, but is actually going to be a metal railing. I've got details on that. Um, and then the installation of three uh, paired double hung sash windows on the second story. So you can see some renderings here just showing this is information y'all saw last month. Um, so the applicable design guidelines here are the Old North Knoxville design guidelines. Um, however, these do focus mostly on residential buildings. So you know, we made sure that the applicant also um, referred in depth to the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation, um, since this building is a commercial outlier in the Old North Knoxville uh, residential district. And I'm happy to go into the Secretary of the Interior Standards if there are any that y'all would like to hear. Um, just to break down some of the findings, and then I'll let Logan and, and Lawrence speak a little bit. Um, this is a, it contributes to the local historic overlay. Like I said, there's an original building from 1927 with the warehouse structure dating to the 1960s. Um, the facade received that rehabilitation to its current state that you see in the 1990s. There was a 1970s mansard roof. And um, in your full application packet, there are more photos of those, and I'm happy to pull that up as well. So um, rehabilitation of the facade draws from a 1930s photograph, and then the facade of a comparable structure in Fort Sanders that was built in 1926. Um, the applicants proposing two storefront systems, um, flanking a full light double door, then the storefront systems will have bulkheads and transom windows, and the proportions overall in the design are appropriate for a 20th century commercial building. The applicant has presented um, options of both metal and wood storefront systems for the facade. So this is the materials. And the applicants requested that staff be given the final approval of the material. Um, the neighborhood has expressed a preference for wood storefront systems. Um, in the opinion of staff, um, wood, metal, or aluminum clad wood would be appropriate for the commercial nature of the building, as long as the mountain profiles, trim, and window sizes reflect what's been provided on the application. Um, the awning, that's a flat metal awning, which is quite simple in design and size and materials. Um, the design of it is um, appropriate for the size of the facade. It extends evenly across the storefront windows and doors. Um, and it could be removed without detriment to the facade. Um, the 1960s section is minimally visible from the public right of way. The applicant has provided um, sort of showing the sections of it. You can see it highlighted in blue there, like what is visible from Harvey Street and what is visible from East Scott Avenue. We can talk about that further. Um, in staff's opinion, the one over one double hung sash windows, um, both on the 1927 section and then on the warehouse section, those are appropriate. Um, the neighborhood has again expressed a preference to see wood windows be installed here. Um, and then the one over one, the replacement windows on the 1927 section, uh, staff thinks those are appropriate. The applicant has noted that these might not be ultimately permissible due to some building code restrictions, which we can speak about um, with the applicants. And so one elevation might need to be redesigned and um, the applicant has provided an example of what that might look like, which I can also show. Um, so the storefront systems on the warehouse section. Um, these windows are taller in proportion than the double hung windows. 
or the storefront, the facade storefront systems, but staff notes that the rear section is a more modern structure. It's constructed for industrial purposes. Um, in staff's opinion, these taller storefront systems don't detract from the overall integrity of the building. They don't duplicate window patterns from an earlier period, which is noted in the um, Secretary of the Interior standards. And they do serve to differentiate the two sections, You know, what's the contemporary work and what is the more historic structure. Um, the rear elevation work is appropriate, and then also the removal of the siding material and um, covering those concrete masonry units with stucco is appropriate. So staff's recommending approval of the work is proposed with the following conditions, um, that the specifics on the balcony material and design, which you can see um, depicted on these side elevations, be submitted to staff for final approval, which the applicant's already gotten back with me on that, and we can talk about it. Um, then pending further review alongside building codes, um, design of the east elevation, if these windows uh, have to change, they can be submitted for reviewed by staff, but obviously staff will retain the right to um, submit this to return to the commission in the event of major changes in window placement and size. Um, and then material specifications um, on facade storefront systems, double hung windows, and then the side elevation storefront systems do need to be submitted to staff for final approval. Thank you. Um, we know, our, I think we know our applicants are present. So if you would start with your name and address, please. Uh, uh, this is Logan Higgins, uh, 133C South Gay Street, Knoxville, Tennessee. Am I, can everyone hear me? Yes. yes. Awesome. <laughs> and Lawrence is here as well. I'll give him a second to speak up. Yeah, yeah this is Lawrence Eaton. Um, can you all hear me? You're good. Yes. Okay, great. Lawrence Eaton, 2225 Riverside Drive in Knoxville. Um, <clears throat> I, yeah, I, I, this is uh, great. Um, uh, Lindsay, um, great presentation of the application. This is drawing from, you know, Logan's work on the design. Um, and so I'll just let him kind of take a stab. I'll fill in any details after he's finished. So go ahead, Logan. All right. And before I do, if there's anyone, um, Lindsay, do you know if there's anyone with the neighborhood that would like to speak to this uh, before we get going? They typically would, would come uh, later in the presentation. Okay, perfect. All right. Well, then um, yeah, Lindsay definitely covered a lot um, of what is happening here. And um, so if we if you don't care to just go to the top, I'll just kind of run through the, the packet. And um, if any of the uh, uh, commissioners have any questions on a page or something, just you know raise your hand or speak up and I will uh, gladly address that. So um, Logan, this project- I don't have all of the pages of the packet in the presentation. So if there's something okay. specific you wanna see, just let me know. That's fine. All right. Um, <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, and as Lindsay um, referenced that we definitely looked at photographs of uh, the structure historically and actually found a building that was built uh, in the fort by the same developer a year previously. Um, and that's where we drew our inspiration for the front facade modifications. Um, and then if we go to the next page. The, the site plan, okay. Do you want the full packet? If you don't care, um, if, if you can, but um, if not, okay. you know, we can work with what we've got. Two seconds. Sorry, y'all. One moment. Okay, great. Wouldn't be Zoom if you didn't watch somebody do this. <laughs> Can you see it now? Yes. Okay, great. 
Um, it's not, there we go. Okay. Um, and you can, okay, perfect. So um, yeah, these are just some pages in the packet showing the, the location. Um, again, as mentioned, it is the, I believe it's the only commercial building in the uh, historic overlay. Um, and so there's definitely the, the guidelines don't address a lot of the things that we're doing here. Um, we can go to the next page. And um, on the site plan, so the site plan has changed a little bit um, since we submitted. And mainly there's more green space and less parking lot. We are um, not only on the left side is there a strip of greenery going up the property line um, that it, it's kind of at an angle. So it goes from about 10 to seven or uh, 10 to five feet. Um, but in between the parking lot and the building, we're also removing a portion of the um, of the parking lot to allow for more more greenery. And so, we've actually spoken with uh, building codes about this site uh, specifically. And um, you know, they said that as long as we weren't adding to impervious area, well, we're actually removing some of the impervious area. So we're um, taking away from what gets. Uh, drained off the site. So we can go to the next page. Um, so this is our list that we made of, of everything, trying to itemize everything we're doing. And because the uh, Old North guidelines are so lacking in, you know, for this one instance, we did completely address the Secretary of Interior's uh, guidelines for historic preservation. And in the next couple pages, you can see references to the guidelines um, in regards to everything we're doing. And so everything that we chose to do was filtered through this list of recommendations. Um, and then on the next page, uh, we can flip through this a little bit more because we've already seen a lot of this. This is the elevation, front elevation changes um, onto some uh, precedent on this page and the next page, uh, just showing what has been done and then on to the next page um, the awning showing uh, you know our, our awning is not quite as ornate as the awning would have been had it been built downtown in the 20s um, but it is proportionally um, appropriate for this era and then on the next page showing some of the different views the street perspectives uh, of the different parts of the building Th those clear story windows there um, were larger windows at one point and then were brought down to these very tiny windows and they they need repair, they're, they're rotting and everything. But again, because this is an adaptive reuse, um, you know, there's so much that's going to have to change to make it from a somewhat dark office space to be an open, comfortable living environment. So that we're, we're following those same openings and the headers, the existing headers that are there, uh, but just enlarging those to be more appropriate for living space. In that middle photo, you can see that, um, you can kind of see the difference between the original portion of the building, you know, up, up at the top photo, and then the addition in the 60s, which is just a pure concrete warehouse uh, building. So onto the next page, um, some more photos and also showing the visibility from Harvey and um, the rear, which is not visible at all from any public right except the alley. Um, and then those elevations that we've already addressed and looked at. Um, and, and like Lindsay said, it kind of appears, if you go to the next page, the, um, that these are balconies and they're actually, they're not, they are um, flush railings with just a doorway. So just imagine it a very large window and a railing to keep you from falling out of that very large window. Um, and th th the idea behind this is just to open up the living space to the outdoors. You know, Old North is a front porch neighborhood. And um, in a building like this, we, we would either have to put balconies everywhere um, or the other extreme is everyone is closed off. And so our hope here is that we can kind of keep that um, neighborhood environment of being able to open up your doors and, and have that porch, that um, natural light, natural air uh, flow uh, feeling, but still be in a uh, apartment condo. So um, next page shows the 
uh, rear elevation, again, we've covered that. And then um, on the next couple pages, we're looking at some precedents and examples of where of opening proportions and scale. Um, and then also a brief explanation of how those on the previous page, the um, we're showing how in those in the warehouse, we have these mezzanines and having that double height of uh, storefront will help bring in light uh, for those mezzanines. And then on the next page, um, Lindsay kind of touched on this, but the National Park Service talks about modifications following the record of time. And um, just kind of a way to compare what we're doing here. This building or this portion of the building in the rear built in the 60s, um, it also in the 60s, concrete buildings, this is what some of what we were doing in the 50s and 60s in that time. So we believe that the scale of, and the proportions of what we're doing are definitely in the uh, the record of time there. So, and then on the last page, again, those renderings that Lindsay already showed. And like she said, um, on the east elevation, there are some restrictions with the openings that we have presented. Uh, for example, we do know that um, three of those clear story windows are gonna have to remain the same uh, because of their proximity to the property line. And um, our request is that as we work with uh, building codes and we've been in talks with Jim Tente and Aaron Skates about that, but um, as we work through that with them, we just request that staff is given the ability to um, approve those changes. And again, those changes will be within a 8% uh, of fenestration window openings and whatnot, the, the, the most we would be doing is dropping what you see by 8%. Um, so that's that's kind of what we're working with. So um, I believe that's everything. Lawrence, if you have anything you want to add. Yeah, absolutely. Great job, uh, Logan. I'll just, I kind of wanted to just address a few uh, issues kind of head on um, to follow up with what Logan said in a little bit more detail. Um, I guess the first thing is that this is my first project where I've actually had to look beyond the Old North Design Guidelines to the Secretary, Secretary of the Interior um, uh, standards. And um, I guess just I want to make one comment which really struck, struck me, which was, you know, a, a comment that or comment that this might be too contemporary of a change to too modern of um, modification to the building. And if you look at the Secretary of Interior Guidelines, you really see that that's in some ways the intent for adaptive reuse, not to give a sense of false history, not to create something which would have been built in 1927 or in 1960 um, in order to, um, so hold on just a second. <laughs> Lawrence is being attacked by Sorry the about that. army. Um, um, <laughs> right. Just get, you know, the, the, the intent really is not to present a, um, a, a reproduction of what's the past, but really to mark this building as something that has been modified in 2020 for new use. And um, like we shared in our presentation in a workshop that this this hasn't this building has had an in, inappropriate use for 100 years. It's been foreclosed on four times because it served as retail. It served as office. It's even served as industrial it has three phase power to it to run motors right. and that's what the owner had used it for, for is to actually light manufacturing um, and as we move yeah. into the next era of the building's use as residential you know it, it will be marked with clear um, modifications which reflect that it has been modified in 2020 using materials which are sympathetic to um, the, the the neighborhood and also to other complementary uh, projects throughout Knoxville. Um, the question about wood and the question about metal and that that's a we 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 request that Lindsay and staff be given the ability to um, uh, uh, to um, to approve the material choices there. We consulted with Kay Graybeal immediately after purchasing this building and shared with her our preliminary findings of the the almost identical building in, in Fort Sanders. Um, and we discussed wood and metal. Um, and again, we're, we're looking for use change and uh, um, construction, which is going to be sustainable. We believe that metal is sustainable. It metal 
doesn't rot. It's we surmise it is recycled because we have one of the largest aluminum, you know, metal recycling facilities within our vicinity. Um, we can't trace where all the metal comes from that might go in this building, but we do believe that it's you know superior in its uh, performance and its uh, just sustain overall sustainability to use metal uh, in these systems. Uh, and then that that's what Kay shared with us initially. Um, when she looked at the building with a, a site meeting back in, I, I believe it was January or February of 2019. Um, let's see if there's any other questions. Uh, I think those were the two main things that I wanted to, to address. I mean, it's a, Logan said it's a front porch neighborhood. We're trying to incorporate elements of that within this design um, and uh, allow um, some really uh, comparable amenities to what homes uh, offer, um, but are not, uh, but, but in, in a different package, right? Because there are no, um, there are no multifamily of this size in old North Knoxville proper um, on the edges, um, but none uh, like this. It's a very unique, uh, very unique um, uh, type of building. And we believe that, that our plan to restore it is uh is the the most appropriate um and um uh, there's any other questions i have right now any, any other i think that's that those are my main concerns we can address anything else that comes up uh uh here uh in the q a well thanks for a great thanks you both for a great presentation um but that this kind of detail really helps us uh get a handle for what's going on um I guess before we go to commission, is there any, are there any neighbors or any opposition that would like to to weigh in today? I have a written statement. Um, I'm just pulling up this presentation. Back to it. Can y'all see that screen? Great. All right. Um, so I'll read what Mr. Pierce wrote. Um, <clears throat> So as mentioned in the application, having the new use fit with um, the neighborhood, the use of materials commonly found throughout Old North Knoxville should be used. Um, this is the, that is the basis for a preference of wood in the reconstruction of the front facade and all window replacements. Um, Mr. Pierce requests that scale, massing size and placement should be brought to the commission for review and the neighborhood to give input. Um, and he notes that the use of metal framed windows will not have the fenestration that fits a residential style common, common in Old North. So that's on the windows. The second element is um, not having a floor plan to review. It is, it is assumed that the front entries proposed are one center common area entry. I'll just, you can see that there. And then um, two adjacent private residence entries. The proposal incorporates porches into the front of two of two residence entries, um, and this would place porches immediately adjacent to the sidewalk right of way. This is not common in Old North Knoxville and would look out of place. Um, the setback is necessary to buffer a residence from street and sidewalk traffic. For those reasons, it is preferred that the front facade have one center common entry and the adjacent be window fronts only. Um, the front awning details should come to commission for final review and approval, neighborhood to give input. Um, the neighborhood wanted to ensure that the awning is appropriate to the period and style of the building. And I have, I have further documentation from the applicants. And then um, the neighborhood notes that the common area entries on the side elevations with the tall windows appear too modern for the period that the overall building should be representing. It is preferred that options be presented with lower windows above those doors, more representative of a transom window. Um, it is preferred that the balconies be detailed and brought to commission for review, but the, now with the balconies are railings. So um, reviewing these details avoid, avoids a modern element being too distracting to the appearance of the building. And that's, that's all. Okay. Um, hey, I, uh, Logan Higgins here. May I speak to that a little bit? Yeah, if you Certainly. want to keep it brief, that'd be good. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I do want to say that this project, um, ever, ever since we, we, it was purchased in 2018, um, has been shown 
and communicated to the neighborhood with and that it started with a rezoning um, and has continued through the, um, the modification or to, to this point. And um, we have been in conversation with neighborhood board members and representatives, as well as, um, you know, doing the uh, workshop last month where we presented this, um, of course, to you all, but with the hope that if there was any feedback, it would come to us um, early on. And there have been very few changes uh, since then. I, I, the only, I think the only changes that we've made since then were just adding more detail to the packet, which didn't take away from what was like what you're seeing right now um, was was very similar. And so there, there has been a lot of time and opportunities to uh, discuss this. And I, I think I understand a lot of these these comments, but I think they're coming from a, a lack of understanding of the not only the, the project itself, the building itself, um, but also what the guidelines are recommending for this. Um, and then, you know, what how this should be integrated into the neighborhood because you can't integrate this into the neighborhood the same way that you could inter integrate a shotgun house or a Victorian house, you know. Um, and a lot of what we're doing are, yeah, I, I, let's take the porch for example. Sure, you may not have a porch that is this close to the sidewalk, but in this neighborhood porches, the setbacks are the, the smallest setbacks you see in the whole city. Um, well, apart from downtown. Um, and it's not uncommon at all to have porches very close. And the whole idea, or the whole point of a front porch is so that you can be, um, you know, in conversation with your neighbors as they walk down the sidewalk. There's, I would say there's no harm in um, just growing that, you know, and I, I don't want to like uh, nitpick line item these things, but I do think that this is coming from a, a, a slight lack of understanding of what we're dealing with. Um, and I also want to say that there has been ample opportunities to communicate and, and work on some of these things, but we haven't received any direct feedback um, from anyone. So. It, yeah, this is Lawrence. If I could add one quick thing, two items I wanted to add. One, one was um, this packet is the same basically the same design which we applied for in December for a historic preservation grant, which we received from the city of Knoxville, uh, the fund for the improvement of historic buildings. So the city of Knoxville is a partner on this. This is, this was, uh, this design really hasn't changed a lot. Um, <clears throat> another comment, I wanted to make, which is just my personal, my perception of this, these windows, the, the, the 1960s garage, it, it's uh, garage are where, if you want to call it is basically a parking garage it is poured con cast concrete uh the high, entire thing i mean the beams are massive on the inside and the windows that we see right now are essentially like out of a trailer home like they're so small and they look very so it's a tremendous change to go from what we see now today to the new one I think that there might be there just that that causes a concern that oh well the windows could be so much smaller yeah well they could be but they really were just 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 slapped in there you know I think of, you know uh, just a sign of the times they you know the affordability um, the the windows are are they're all metal uh, they have some plastic elements to them uh, and they're divided by but them actually function anymore uh, just from deterioration uh, of the um, of the exterior. Um, fiberglass, you know, covering. So just to make those two comments to provide just a little more information from my, my perspective. Um, you. Bart, if you don't mind, for the sake of time, I have to be off in five minutes. Please go. So I'd like to go please, ahead and make please a motion. address. Yes. Yeah, go for Thank it. Thank you. Um, based on the application submitted and the evidence heard, as well as recognizing the neighborhood concerns as well. Um, um, it, it, this building is definitely a challenging vote from the standpoint that it is not our standard typical residence. It's a commercial looking building. It's as modernist, if you want to consider it, this industrial concrete block. And we're going through an adaptive reuse. There, 
there's no way in the world, no matter what, to make this look more like the standard residential neighborhood building. Based on that scenario, I think the design that is presented presents uh, a good scale, nice proportions. Um, it's not objectionable. Uh, um, and I think the fact that it is different than your historic home that is gonna further enhance the historic homes. Um, with that scenario, I'd like to make a motion to approve based on staff recommendation and based on what the applicant noted that the maximum difference in window sizes from what we approved to what it might be at the end would be plus or minus 8%. And my motion would accept also metal windows, whether they're steel or aluminum or aluminum, uh, simply because there's no way in the world to get windows of that size and wood framing that would be of any kind of quality in today's market. Um, and that's my motion. Do you have a motion? Second. Okay, th thank you, Commissioner Webster. We have a motion and a second, so we'll have a roll call. Rick Blackburn? Yes. Bart Carey? Aye. Casey Fox? Aye. Ferris Eade? Yes. Daisha Lundy? Aye. Lori Matthews? Yes. Daytuana Mitchell? Aye. Sandy Swilly? Was that a yes, Sandy Swilly? Yes. Can okay. you hear me? Yes. And Stanton Webster? Yes. Motion carries. Very good. Thank you. So I guess we move into phase B or the other side of the, the next. Yes. Property, next and these door. are a little, well, these will be more brief for sure. Thank you, Ferris. I know Ferris was leaving. But Lindsay, I, I'm going to have to go as well. I'm sorry. I've got another okay. meeting. So. Okay. We'll okay. still have a quorum. I, I hope so. Okay. Thank you. Thank you guys. Have a good, have a good week, everyone. Good month. Bye-bye. Have a good week. You too. Um, okay. All right. Um, so we'll just move through these briefly. And then um, we've got a brief workshop just to look at some, some work with Mr. Holmes. That will be fun. Um, so the second, this project is at 424 East Scott Avenue. Um, I'm going to go through it briefly. And I, I think with this one, Logan, they won't have too much to say on it. Um, the scope of work involved, there is a bunch of level one work involved and you can see it broken down, sorry, here. Um, the applicant is going to repair the existing wood, including, including some wood clabbered, eave overhangs and soffits, um, the installation of some gutters on the front of the house to match the existing gutters, repair to the masonry foundation, including, and they've proposed mortar repointing with type M mortar, um, and then repair to the masonry chimney by repointing with type N mortar. Um, and then the uh, additional work involves the replacement of this existing asphalt shingle roof with a new metal roof. The applicant has proposed a panel lock roofing system. It's a ribbed metal roof with exposed fasteners. And then additionally, the um, removal of this basement level window and the installation of a door in the same location. Um, and the door will be accessed by a wood platform that will be approximately eight foot by eight foot and 50 inches above grade. So it will have to have a metal railing and they're just proposing to install a metal railing to match the existing stairs. Um, the applicable design guidelines, again, are the old north design guidelines and staff uh, findings are that the repair and replacement in kind of the wood siding and eave overhangs are appropriate within the guidelines. Um, repair to the masonry foundation and chimney does meet the guidelines, however, they should meet the specifications of preservation brief two and use mortar with a lime content that's more appropriate for historic masonry than the, um, than the uh, type in mortar. The basement level window is not a character defining feature of the house. It's not visible from the public right of way. So replacement of that window with a secondary access door is uh, appropriate. Um, the applicant should submit the door specifications and then details on the um, platform design and the guardrail for staff approval. 
And then think this is the element, this discussion carries over into the next application because this is the same applicant as the next application and they're proposing the same metal roofing materials. So the design guidelines note that replacement roofs should duplicate the roofing materials originally found in the neighborhood, um, including standing seam metal cladding. So this replacement metal material is a ribbed metal roof with exposed fastener, um, a ribbed seam and two lower ribs. The applicant has referenced some similar roof profiles, which are both new construction. Um, staff's opinion, and you know, I consulted, a K, actually consulted K and some, some past precedent for this. Um, a metal roof can be appropriate within the guidelines. However, the metal roof selected should better reflect the profile of a standing seam metal roof if, if the standing seam metal roof is cost prohibitive um, that would be originally found in the neighborhood and color should match the specifications of the design guidelines. So staff is recommending approval of the work as proposed with the conditions that the applicant use type O mortar to repoint the historic masonry sections um, unless you know, they can provide documentation that it's more modern brick. Um, and then that the replacement door and railing details be submitted to staff and then finally, that a metal roof be selected that better resembles a historic standing seam metal that's originally found in the neighborhood um, with a color to meet the design guidelines and that can be approved by staff as well. Thank you. Um, you guys wanna weigh in again? I will leave this to Lawrence. <laughs> yeah, this is Lawrence uh, Eaton again. Um, so I just, just a clarification on the mortar. So, I mean, we think there's some Portland in this mortar. It's stronger than your lime-based uh, mortar. And so, you know, the commercial, the, the readily available restoration mortar we have, which I've used in the past, is more like a typo than a type in. Uh, so definitely agree with the finding on uh, the recommendation on that. Um, the, the roof choice, uh, it just, Kind of presents us with a little challenge so currently there's like a three tab shingled roof which you know is it's uh, asphalt based so it's a petroleum product and we we're really um feel strongly about using kind of materials which have more uh a better environmental profile and longer uh in, in greater longevity so we really are um would like to use a metal roof uh on this and have seen the the panel lock uh, application in the neighborhood, which is why we included it. We somewhat perplexed why those aren't allowed, uh, even if in a, in, a, in a color palette that matches, um, you know, the neighborhood. Um, so from, from our perspective, you know, we could, we could put a shingle roof on, which, you know, it's the majority of the homes in the neighborhood. Um, being, uh, you know, uh, restricted to a standing seam is, is problematic from a cost perspective for us. Uh, the cost Standing seam on this particular house is about 68% higher than an asphalt. So it's just prohibitively expensive. And, and we're, I just, I've lived in the neighborhood or lived in the neighborhood like 12 years, never saw a standing seam in the neighborhood. Um, and just feel like there should be some, some flexibility in what you could use uh, in terms, if you wanted to choose metal and you wouldn't, so you just feel like there should be some flexibility in, in the, in the type of metal roof you have. And um, perhaps a, um, a compromise might be a different profiled roof, which which resembles more of a, a standing seam, but it is an exposed fastener. So it is it's a it's the the labor expenses are not as great as they are uh, to install it as you would um, a, a standing seam roof, and in addition, the material cost is not as great as a standing seam. Um, what makes a standing seam more expensive is that each of the panels is about half as big as this this one you see here so that you have twice as many pieces you're hauling up to the top in addition when you're concealing the fasteners you just have more pieces that you have to buy more metal metal um, accessories to install the roof so that makes the standing seam roof which is allowable in the guidelines you know much more expensive um Lindsay, do you have a picture of the 5V roof, the lower ribbed exposed? Yes. Uh, okay, um, the one she's showing here, the Penelope Plus is what, but what we've requested, which has been utilized in infill construction, uh, 310, 318, and they offer a pretty wide color palette in that as well. 
Um, with the 5B, it's commonly found in a um, 5B is commonly found in galvalume, which which is what you see. It's like bare aluminum right here. But we we think we can also get that in a, a color palette, which is sympathetic to the neighborhood. It looks more like a, a has there's a darker shade. Um, so if the commission is comfortable making a, 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 a allowance to move from a strictly a standing seam as an option for approval and allowing for the 5B, uh, that's what we really prefer. We really do not want to put a shingled roof and we cannot afford a standing seam roof. Um, this is the same sort of, this carries over to Oklahoma as well. So just to let you know that. And thanks. Any questions, Thank please let me know. I would also, uh, Lindsay, I don't know if you could pull up a standing seam just for visual reference, um, but the 5V is definitely um, more similar, very similar visually um, to a standing seam. So that's all I wanted to add. I think the rib lock and the, and the 5V both are to simulate that that look, but I, I'm, I'm going to go back and I can't tell you, I can't cite the application or the date, but I'm reasonably sure that we approved um, two or three years ago in, in Old North, a uh, uh, the same exact situation. There was a rib block or, or, that we approved and we, and um, I think it was in a bronze color. And I'm, I was really, <clears throat> from a distance, it simulates this, the standing scene too. And it's, it is about maybe a third of the cost. Yeah, so just from reviewing the files, um, there are multiple instances of the rib lock. Um, several of them were do not have uh, approval. And one, one conversation that you might re be remembering, Kay pointed me to this one, is um, an applicant on Granger who was initially denied the ribbed type metal roof. Um, and then you know, they went back and found that some of them had been um, installed previously and they, it went back in front of the commission. So it was reheard um, and it was approved. I don't have the year on that, but it was on Granger Avenue in Old North. Um, and I'll just offer from the neighborhood, basically they, they think that the neighborhood states that um, the metal roofing material in the application has been uh, approved on infill new construction um, and he, Mr. Pierce noted that where it exists, the roofing was installed without HCC approval. So it has been kind of a complicated precedent with this type of material in the neighborhood. Did the, um, Lindsay, did the neighborhood express an opinion about this particular that, project? That's what that's what it just was. She, uh, Mr. Pierce said um, all the other findings and recommendations, they support approval. It should be mentioned that the metal roof, roofing material in the application has only been previously approved on infill construction, new construction, um, and anywhere else it exists, it was installed without HCC approval. And um, from my files, that's not entirely true because we did go back and rehear that one, or the commission went back and reheard that one on Granger. So it has been approved there. Um, it's just been, and some of them have been installed without HCC approval. So it's complicated. The fact that we could, the, the applicant could still go with the three tab cheap asphalt shingle. I mean, we could, we could be careful what we wish for because that, that to me, this, the, uh, the rib lock or the 5B is much superior to seeing a cheap shingle on there. Um, but I mean, we, we have to, we'll have to conclude how we all, all feel right. about that. But I, I my interpretation, and I'd love to hear what the other um, commissioners think, but it sounded like the neighborhood didn't necessarily oppose the use of this type of roof, just kind of noted the, the complicated nature. Uh, what I found from just past precedent and from looking, and again, I want to hear from the commission just from confirming with Kay as well. Basically, you know, there was a whole discussion, a back and forth, um, the neighborhood, the neighborhood didn't want to see the ribbed roof on historic houses. They wanted something more similar to the standing seam. So I, I think the 5V might be more appropriate um, just to offer, that's their perspective, so. I know in the, I know in the um, well, at least the couple of metal roof suppliers I have, there's a whole lot more color options with 
um, with the rib than there is the 5V, but, and, and we specified it has to be an appropriate color. Is that right, Lindsay? Yeah. Yes, and the guidelines, the color specifications are, um, dark green, charcoal gray, black, or reddish brown. Okay. I agree that the color choice is uh, important, significant. So I appreciate that being in the recommendation. Yeah, this is this is Lawrence. I um, just had spoke with Logan about this previous day with the five V. You know, I think that like my current my supplier right now of of, of metal roofing doesn't offer the five V uh, in any any color. It's only in galvanum. But I believe there's some other suppliers that offer it. There's also a number of, um, you know, five, the metal roofs are very common in rural areas. And there are a lot of companies which offer actual, um, you know, painting of, of metal roofs and they offer a warranty of it. Uh, so the paint that they offer, they provide now is much, uh, it's just much more durable and you, know, you can get it in basically an infinite array of colors. Uh, so you can color match potentially a roof with metal uh, after it's been installed. Um, and get a warranty, um, uh, and and those are, I do believe those are century roofs. I have a garage and on Riverside, uh, it's not in the greatest of shape, but it was built 100 years ago, and it's still it's still holding water, and that's from material installed 100 years ago. So we're looking at a, a really great environmental and cost profile. What's the life expectancy on that uh, painting of the standing seam roof? The material. The How often would you have to repaint? Well, the, 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 the warranty from Central States, which is supplied locally by Healy Brown, is 40 years on a painted roof for, for a color on a metal roof. Uh, Galvin, five years. And I, it's not necessarily that the roof fails. It's just that it'll fade or it'll, it'll rust. Rick, were you speaking of if, he paint, if they painted a Galvin a different yeah. color? Yes. Yeah. yeah. If oh. they just want how long that would last. I, I don't know. I'll, <laughs> I'll have to. I'll have to. I, I only know one uh, one painter, which I could consult on that. I would consider that a, <laughs> a last resort. To have to right. Paint it. Yeah. But there, I'm yeah. looking at a supplier online right now that that Galvalum is their stock product, but they do offer gray, red, slate, uh, charcoal, forest green, cocoa brown, and 5V, and and <clears throat> those colors. One of those colors would definitely fit our guidelines, um, but. It's going to be slightly more expensive, but that's that's certainly um, you can definitely get that product. Uh, and if you it sounds like you've already checked it with Healy Brown, and they can um, they have it available by special order. So Healy Brown only offers Galvalume, but there's another one in Alcoa on Alcoa Highway, which offers uh, um, which offers cool. Okay. I think about. 20 different color choices. Can I also add that, um, you know, if the commissioners believe that either the, the panel lock plus or the 5G could be visually appropriate, um, given the cost restrictions of, of doing the different levels um, and then compared to the environmental impact of uh, say a asphalt shingle roof, um, would it be beneficial to to allow either one just to allow for more options to um, happen, or would we want to be very specific about, uh, uh, you know, a specific one? So. Okay, so I think what you're saying is in, if if we have a motion that would you'd like some latitude on which product you might use, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. And I just know, Lawrence, if we can just not use the chat, we're not supposed to be using the chat function. There's um, open meetings issues. Lawrence has st uh, stated into the chat function, there are color choices for 5V that are available locally. And so there is a link and I'm, I'm happy to pull that up if we wanna we'll look at that further, but I don't know that that's super relevant right this minute. But we gotta take a break on the chat. Okay. Um. We've, we've focused on the roof here a lot 
I'm not mm -hmm. sure if there's more discussion, but there's, and I've gotten off um, in looking at roofs, I've lost my agenda on my other uh, mm -hmm. device here, but the, the garage door, <laughs> the, the garage door on the rear. The garage door is not being replaced. Uh, right, and, and so that existing garage door stays then, right? Yes. Hmm. Wow. And what is that space? What is that space going to be? So I can speak to that. Um, that basically these this building, uh, this house was connected to um, 428 East Scott, which you all heard a long time ago, about 10 minutes ago. And um, they were they were connected in the front and in the back. And so this garage door was actually a loading dock for that building. And right. then there was a covered walk across. So um, when they separated the two again, um, they uh, they kept a, a lot of those elements. And and really the the reasoning for why um, th this is just a very large there's a large basement under the house, and then this is a loading dock um, underneath the house as well. And so it, it doesn't quite make sense to try to go through that loading dock to access the basement if um, a, a resident there wants to store something in the basement or if we need to get into the basement to work um, on something. So that's why we want to put this other door and the loading dock, um, we're just leaving it as existing. Um, we have talked about maybe uh, utilizing that space at some point um, because it, it's kind of like an office space for the building. Um, as it is, so um, th there's been some talks amongst ourselves about what we could do with that. But of course, if we were to, to change that, um, we would be uh, back here talking to you yeah. guys before we yeah. made any modifications. All that's in front of us is just the replacement of that window with a door. So we're not looking at the garage. Yeah, the, do the, the, gr the door that we're asking to be added goes directly to our water heater and HVAC or service. Right. right. Well, I guess my question, if, if that stays as a garage door in a residential space, then does it, does that comply with code for, I mean, there's, there's not, the dock doesn't have a, there's not really a, por a porch or a landing there per se. The, the, the truck would back right up to the bottom of the, the bottom of the door, right? Well, and, it, and it's not being used in any way right now, um, or, you know, we don't intend to use it as a loading dock. It's just, we're just leaving what's there um, and, and not modifying it um, in any way. Well, well, the point is if, if, if a resident opens that door and a kid walks out and he falls four feet, what happens is Peter, do you, is that, does that meet residential? Well, that's, it's also not living space down there. Um, that's just like the, the basement area. There, there's no residents in that garage door area. And that's not part of the application that's in front of us right now. Okay. All right. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and Bart, just if I could real quick, this sounds like an issue that Peter and his department would catch in the permitting process if there's something that doesn't quite meet code anyway. Right. So I just wanted to remind the commission of that. Okay. I'm good with the replacement door being added. Um, I think it all seems appropriate. Okay. Um, any more questions from commission discussion? <laughs> we entertain a motion. I'm a little unclear on, on uh, making a motion for the metal roof. I'd love to hear someone else take a stab at it. But, um, It's, it seemed like what we, and from hearing from the applicant, it seemed like what we um, wound up with was their option for a color appropriate 5B metal roof. And I would also uh, stress that all the proper trim pieces are included with that. Um, the eave, obviously the ridge, but that it'd be, uh, it'd be properly 
trimmed. Um, and the other option was a three tab asphalt shingle option. And we don't have to necessarily give those the options, but that was the, that's the two things the applicant talked about. Um, I believe, is that correct? Um, the asphalt shingle wasn't part of the discussion. Um, we were just discussing, you know, alter, you know, alternatives to the ribbed metal roof that might resemble closer to the standing seam. So they'd produce that 5B as, or, as an option. Did the applicant so really ask? ask for the option to use them at the shingle no uh, what we no. referenced was um if the commission finds that you know visually uh, specifically it's appropriate to do either the panel lock or the 5v um we asked for that approval of of either one um and i i think i may have been a little confusing in just referencing the comparison to asphalt shingles which uh has a much worse uh, environmental impact, even though it is the most economical uh, well for the short run. We, we're also trying to look at the long run here. Um, but if, if everyone, and I, I think there was, there was some mention of seeing the, the panel lock plus as being visually appropriate. Um, and if that is the consensus, then we would request the uh, approval of either one of those. Another rib lock comes in 29 and 26 gauge. Is that, do you know if that's the case with the 5V as well? 5V comes in 29 and 26. 26 is more expensive. Right. But it does give a little bit more finished look because it doesn't uh, dimple when you screw it down. Right. Um, I think I, I know the uh, the rib lock comes with um, the scoring that prevents the oil canning. I don't know if the IV does that or not, but um, are you, are you, are, are you can, do you have a, have you got a specification on which, which gauge you would use or, or a thought there? Is your preference the 26 or 29? Sorry, I was, you're, you're kind of cutting out a little bit. I'm um, sorry. Is your my preference is yeah. the. Yeah, I, I was muted, but I'm also having connectivity issues. My preference is the 29 because of the con, the existing the shape of the existing roof is 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 good. The decking is very good. I believe yeah. we can do some like purlins to allow for airflow, and uh, we could felt put some purlins in, allow for airflow under it, and then install 29 gauge directly to the purlins. Okay. All right. So I think I'll make a motion um, to approve based on staff recommendation. Um, and given the conversation about the metal roof and maybe some preference for the 5V, but ultimately leave that to um, staff's approval um, on how well it resembles the historic standing seam metal. Okay, so our motion is on the floor for um, with the roof specific. Yes. I'm so sorry, Bart, if I could. Um, Lori, um, would you just clarify, is your motion um, that they would need to bring something back contingent on staff approval? Do you mean come back before commission, Christina? No, no. Um, submitting additional... Staff Staff recommendation is that it better resemble um, historic standing. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think the final preference okay. then I guess is left with staff. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and asking staff, you know, okay. given the conversation, it seemed like commission was pretty okay with um, the two um, options of metal roofs, just that the color choice um was significant and important so yeah I'm, I'm leaving it up to staff okay perfect so those are the three conditions that are outlined in that staff recommendation right there okay i'll second the motion okay we do have a motion and a second we'll have the roll call rick blackburn yes bart carey aye casey fox 
Aye. Daisha Lundy? Aye. Lori Matthews? Aye. Daytuana Mitchell? Aye. Stanton Webster? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Very, very well. The final uh, project um, so is um, 238 East Oklahoma Avenue. Um, and the scope of work here involves um, repair and paint to the existing cedar shake siding, repair to the masonry foundation, um, including mortar repointing with type N mortar. And there will be one section of the foundation that's reconstructed with existing bricks and new mortar. Um, there is a proposed replacement of the existing front door. You can see it there. Um, it's a non-historic door and it, it's proposed for replacement. Um, and then the major item here is the uh, enclosure of this rear porch. You can see um, the left half of the hip roof porch will be enclosed with two sets of three adjoining single light windows and a sort of wood clabbered siding. And then um, the same roof specifications have been proposed. So um, we can assume that that discussion probably would carry over to the same situation. Um, the replacement of the existing asphalt shingle roof um, with the same ribbed roof specifications as prior. The applicable design guidelines are the old north design guidelines. Um, staff's findings are that um, repair and replacement of the siding is appropriate within the guidelines. Repair to the foundation should match preservation brief to and utilize a mortar more specific to historic masonry, um, whether it's a typo, um, type, type K, depending on the age of the masonry. This house is a little older than the last one. Um, the front door is appropriate to, to be replaced as it's a non-historic modification. Specifications on the proposed replacement door should be submitted to staff for review. Um, enclosure of the rear porch is appropriate. It maintains transparency. Um, it's not going to be visible from the public right of way. The three adjoining single light windows and the wood clabbered um, it do serve to sort of differentiate that sun porch from the existing house. And then the same um, finding that I've, I've described and sort of the same conversation that applied to the last roofing discussion applies here as well. So staff is recommending approval of the work as proposed um, with the conditions that the applicant use mortar more appropriate for the historic bricks, probably a type O. Um, and then the front door specifications be submitted to staff for approval. And then finally, um, the same condition as prior, a metal roof be selected that better resembles a historic standing seam metal um, with a color to meet design guidelines with approval by staff. Thank you. Can we hear from the applicant? Not there. He, he had been having some technical issues. Um, I'm not sure. Okay. But there we go. Allow to talk. Can you hear me now? There yeah. we go. Thank you. Hey, uh, all right. Um, yeah, I yeah. apologize. I lost uh, <laughs> internet and had to get the app and open it up on my phone. So I've been kind of, um, I've missed a little bit. But on this project, and I don't know if, uh, Lawrence is also um, has vanished as well. But um, on this project, it's it's mostly just about repair. Um, the I think I, I'm assuming, um, like I said, I didn't have internet, so I didn't see. But I'm assuming that you all saw the damage to the foundation. Um, that's just from years of neglect. Uh, when when the current owners um, bought this house, it was like very very full. I think they. Um, it had a lot of damage on the inside um, and a lot of neglect that they have um, worked to uh, mitigate in the meantime. And so, um, you know, the fixing the foundations is a priority, um, painting, um, modifying, and you know, fixing the damaging, <laughs> I apologize, um, fixing the damaged elements of the house um, as well. And then I, I'm assuming that we've looked at the um, the rear uh, rendering, but closing in that porch um, and then closing in the area below it uh, so that it becomes a, uh, a sunroom up above and then the, the space below is functional um, for storage. So um, following the guidelines, the most of that stuff is straightforward. The porch is probably the most complicated thing and um, the uh, 
the, the guidelines talk about the visibility from the street. And I, I, as I'm sure you saw in the photos um, included, there's almost, uh, there is no visibility of the porch from the street. You might be able to see a piece of the e, uh, of the roof um, from one angle, but you really can't see it until you walk to the back of the house. So um, we're, I, I think we're in the clear there. And then in terms of material, um, the rendering did have kind of a, a wood siding. We're not completely positive on the, um, the final material there just because like this was a little more preliminary and um, we do want to make sure that what we're doing is, is the most appropriate. And um, so we, we do request that if, if the material is a sticking point or if, if it matters at all, again, this isn't visible at all from the street, but if it matters, uh, we do request that um, the uh, staff has the ability to approve the material because you know there's three options that we would run through here do we do a wood siding and differentiate do we do a shingle and try to m merge it more into integrate it more into the house or do we do some sort of um wood panels so that it is um you know it, it's a, a sunroom that is just very distinctly a sunroom so those are the the three things that we want to further investigate, um, but we would like to kind of get started on some of the other work. And so I request, you know, within those parameters um, is that staff has the ability to, to have the final say, but again, with the visibility, this may not even be um, that relevant to the, the guidelines. And um, I think the, the only other thing is, um, you know, the roof, as we <laughs> just discussed a minute ago, and um, and I, I got cut off at the tail end of that discussion, so I'm not certain what <laughs> the uh, final say was. But um, and then the front door is an early 2000s door that was added on, um, just replacing that door. And I believe that is everything. Um, yep. Oh, and and the only other thing I was going to say is there's a neighbor that is a uh, architectural historian that we've kind of uh, asked about the the color palette and. Um, I haven't really come to a conclusion yet, but we do want to be very, um, the, the guidelines do not restrict paint color. We don't, we don't um, view paint colors at all on, on exterior okay. paint. So that oh, we so need you, to have that conversation. I, I should just shut up. There's no point in even talking. I'm wasting okay. air right now. So, um, all right. Well then I think that's everything. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, if there's any neighbors um, that would like to weigh in, I know we need to get the uh, neighbor. I hope we have James comments there as well. The neighbor, the neighborhood didn't have any additional comments on this one. They supported the recommendations of staff. Perfect, great. Right. Any, any questions or comments from commission? One thing that, the, the mortar the mortar discussion you had Lindsay is that, is that um, could you could you touch on real quickly on that again just that it yeah basically I just said that um, the guidelines encourage that um, repair and to to masonry repointing um, be meet the specifications of the Park Service Preservation Brief 2, which encourages using mortar with aligned content that's more historic for historic building or more appropriate for historic buildings, um, you know, less less Portland cement, more lime because the bricks are softer and um, using something like type in, which can have a, a higher Portland cement content could contribute to spalling or cracking in the bricks. So uh, staff's recommendation was just use a typo probably um, a mortar that's more appropriate for historic bricks than type in. Thank you. Okay, folks, we're down to our last one. I move to approve based on staff recommendation. Second. Second. Okay. Was that Stanton on the second? Or Casey Fox, take your pick. Okay, okay. As long as Lauren has that, we're, we're good. All right, so we have a motion and a second for the roll call. Rick Blackburn? Yes. Bart Carey? Aye. Casey Fox? Aye. Daisha Lundy? Aye. Lori Matthews? Aye. Daytuana Mitchell? Aye. Stanton Webster? Aye. Motion carries.
Great. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you, it. I think we had a, accomplished a lot right there. Do we adjourn before we have the workshop? Yeah, you can say that. Um, we yeah, let's end of regular them. business. And I'll, sure. we'll, Mr. Holmes is going to just um, run us through some plans for a particularly complicated project he has. So I've got um, the documents that he submitted, and then I have a ton of photos. So um, let me pull those up briefly. Oh, I guess I'm not really need to be a part of this, but I do have a, I've got to leave for 11 o'clock in about 10 minutes. So, um, okay. I'll, well, hope you can get 10 yeah. minutes in, I think. I'll listen as long as I can, but it, it is definitely a unique project. You need a motion to adjourn or? Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and have the motion to adjourn. And I'm, so moved. So moved. And it's, do, we have, do we have a second? I'm sorry. Okay. All in, uh, let's just do all in favor, aye. No, no, let me need a roll call for that. Aye. 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 Okay. okay. John, are you with us? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Would you like to? Um, would you like me to run through the photos that I took, or do you want to show your PDF real quick? Uh, you can start with your photos. Is fine. Okay. And the okay. thing that this different than PDF was the, the stuff at the end. Yeah, that's that's the, the, okay. That's great. Um, all right, give me one sec. Okay, so this property is on um, 17th and Highland Avenue. It's the corner, it fronts Highland, but the longer elevation goes along 17th. So I'll just run through some photos. John, if you wanna pipe in at any moment and call stuff out, you're welcome to, but otherwise we'll just kind of look at the situation and then you can, I'll put up your PDF and you can talk about your what you're thinking. Um, okay. So here's the facade. You can see it was significantly modified. The, there were multiple porches on the front that have been enclosed. Um, you know, there are some original column details and porch elements, but this house is a real uh, mix of everything. Um, we're still on the facade. Now we're kind of moving around the corner towards 17th. You can see some major deterioration there. Um, this lovely metal staircase. And then we're getting into where is more of the original sections of the house, including these brick masonry siding with this um, sort of unique joining at the corners. There are large, you know, original windows on the side elevations. Um, and John has good overall photos, so I'll, I'll show those too. But some of these details are just really interesting to know what we're dealing with. So this is still a side porch that um, there's a lovely detail. It's really worth noting how to support a column. Um, <laughs> yeah, you see all those stacks of stones. Um, and then, you know, there are these wide eave overhangs. These dormers were definitely a later addition. Um, there were dormers on both sides that provided upstairs apartment space. Now we're moving towards the rear. So we, there is still that brick masonry exterior. Um, and then now, yeah, you can see kind of the full length of that side elevation that we were looking at. So there are sort of the gable sections and then this large dormer. Um, then we'll start moving over. Oh, oops, that's back. Now we'll start moving over to the other side elevation. This is the interior lot line where things get really interesting. Um, there are multiple additions. Um, this metal roof section was possibly a porch at some point that was enclosed. You see another um, sort of second story dormer addition that was cobbled on there. Um, and then I just have some variety of detail shots. There's a whole mix of sidings here. There's some sort of vinyl, there's multiple layers of brick veneer, there's brick masonry. Um. Lindsay? Yes. So if we're facing the house, the side that you're showing us now, is that the left, right side of the house? So if you're facing the house, this would be the right side and the rear. Okay. Um, and Good. again, I'll, I'll show clear elevations that John has taken, but these were just some of the details. It, it definitely is confusing. Um, is that one taken from the alley right there? The one you yes, off this is the taken alley. from the alley. This is standing right. in the alley. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Um, and then now we're on the right side, closer to the front. And so one of the things that we wanted to call out was that this this wall is really bowing out in a pretty significant way. You can see there, it had some Portland cement mortar um, and it's got a whole curve to it. 
Um, there's a little doghouse almost situation, but that provides basement access. Um, and then we're back on that enclosed porch and the facade. So I'll pull up um, one second and I'll pull up John's thing and I'll, I'll let John talk a little bit more about it. Let's see. Do we have any idea what it was like originally? There is a Sanborn, which I, I don't have with me and we'll definitely present that when it's uh, and I can send that to you guys after this meeting. Um, it, this was, there were multiple port, there's a corner porch that wrapped around that has been enclosed. Um, obviously this was a porch, but it did, these two gables we think are, are original. It was a pretty unique kind of structure that had sort of a hipped roof with gables projecting on each side and multiple, the corner porch on the front, this was a sort of, this was a porch there. So this is it the side definitely built. Definitely built single family. Uh, <laughs> that was well, my it, question. Yeah. It most recently had six apartments. Six apartments. But, but the, the side entrance suggested it may it could possibly have been a duplex on the originally. I'm talking. To, I, I did talk to the previous owner. It used to be his grandfather's house, actually, and they said it was it turned into duplex at some point, and then at some point, maybe in the '70s, it was rewired and converted to six apartments. And this this front section did used to have like a wraparound porch here on that section mm -hmm. on the right. And you can so, um, see he has his. I've never seen anything like this one. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It, it gets a little more interesting as we so we've started the interior Crazy. demo process, and we've got the upstairs demoed. the The wood for these funny shed things in the middle is looks to be original. It has their old sheathing on them and old rough cut two by fours. Um, I was surprised to find that. Uh, it, there is some damage here where it's, of course, the, the porch column is being supported by the stones. Uh, part of this upper um, you know, center section there is, has sunk down you know, noticeably. Um, yeah. and, John, are you uh, saying that? That dormer section over the front porch is, appears to be original. I was shocked, but yes, it's it's, it's rough cut lumber, and it's got it the old old style, um, you know, eight to twelve inch slats on the on the sides. I've got some cool. pictures. I could, it could also be a historic alteration too. Yeah, it could. Yeah, it could rough be cut. older. Full dimension lumber doesn't mean it's it original, it but very old lumber. It matches kind of the rest. Well, Might be okay. a good idea. To, come take a look at it. <laughs> yeah, so that's something we were going to talk about too. Um, I was there yesterday. Talk but, a little so. bit about what you're, you're thinking. Okay, so yeah, this, this is a good picture to look at. So our, our plan is to get rid of the, the whole six apartment thing. That's just too much. Um, a logical place to split it in half is there at the porch. So you can retain the original entrance on the side that does have those columns. And um, that would be the entrance for apartment two. Uh, apartment one would be on the front. Uh, this really weird addition on the alley side, you know, we want to get rid of that completely. And uh, when we got the house, it was so full of, of stuff, we couldn't even really see. But now that we're starting to get it open, we can, we can see there's a fair amount of damage in that back right hand corner. The, the floor is almost gone in a lot of these sections that that two to three foot section on this right hand side has a lot of issues. Uh, most of the, the first floor seems to be in decent shape. The second floor needs a little bit more work, especially the this dormer that's on the right hand side on the second level. It it is really bad and the roof structure is really bad. I would definitely want to replace that and rebuild it. I don't see how we can salvage what's there. Now the foundation, ironically, is in decent shape underneath this. It looks like it was rebuilt maybe in the 60s or 70s with cinder block, but the, the structure itself, the outside walls are completely rotten now. And you can kind of see from some of those pictures, um, the siding is basically gone. The framing is basically gone behind it. Um, and then on the front side, the idea was to rebuild the wraparound porch, redo the entrance there, 
um, this would be like a walk-up entrance for the front apartment and then they would have a view out to 17th street as well on that on that porch and and one thing that was kind of hard to see can you go back to the very first picture yes. you had Lindsay, <laughs> on the front um right there it's, it's hard to go back one right there so you, you've got the um above the entrance you can barely see it there's another window that's to the left right there that's actually another funky kind of egress window they've created a little dormer box we probably want to just get rid of that that seems appropriate to me yeah um yeah one thing just in kind of showing these hearing from the neighborhood is that the brick masonry site, like the brick masonry exterior is pretty unique in Fort Sanders, I feel like, or at this point it is. And so that might be something to note for preservation. Um, also, John had kind of discussed if if anybody, if y'all wanted to come out and see it, yeah, and walk around I'd and love see to. it in person, then yeah. we, could, we can find a date that works for everybody. We'll have to notice it. So just be a little organized about it, but get everybody out there if some folks want to walk around. I think that'd be great. Okay. I'm awesome. interested in that sidewalk cut being different from the actual doorway entrance. You definitely want to fix that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you think that was the door originally maybe over towards the left? That was one thought, but they've got the brick on the right. Logically, you would think that. Hmm. It's interesting. I guess you could see inside to see. This was, this is a lot of the stuff that John was talking about. Get rid of, yeah. <laughs> I think that's a good, good choice. The old, the old uh, little stairs here. Um, th this stairway and landing is actually how you get to one of the attic apartments. So as soon as you turn here, there's a staircase inside that gets you to part of the attic. Um, so we, we want to get rid of that. I, that. That can go back to the other picture there, Lindsay, on that side. Yeah. One. right here this is where most of the damage is and it looks like from the demo that we have done this upper dormer the foundation the the exterior walls that are not brick this is this is definitely the most damaged section interesting yeah. it'd be really interesting to see some old find old or any existing photos of it old no we try i at least looked through the McClung digital digital collection and tried to find some. Um, I, you know, definitely try to look for other avenues. We don't have anything in our our files from it that wasn't kind of reflecting this. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if if anybody in the neighborhood, you know, I'll try to reach out to Randall too and see if if he knows of other resources for historic photos because I think that would be really useful. And we do have the Sanborn for that for the footprint as it was in 1917. So that, that will be helpful to work from. Yeah. Well, yeah, so may, uh, if you guys are interested, I'll, I'll do a doodle poll or something and we can find some time that folks would, would be able to come out and visit the I think site. That'd be great. I yeah. think that'd be great to do. Yeah, and then maybe we can get, maybe Peter or someone can come as well from building and we can just um, all sort of have a conversation about what 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 would be best for this property because it's a really unique house, I think. Yeah, it's a mess. The biggest, <laughs> the biggest unknown I have is kind of what to do with the roof line at the front. Yeah. If we were to make this a you know the section there on the right a, a port a wraparound porch, what would we do with the roof line over that? Hmm. Anybody has any thoughts? Would the suggestions? Would the edge of the porch be where the edge of the so structure is? Currently, yeah. As long as that foundation is. Is this the front? This is the front then. This is the side. This, this is seventeenth. Seventeenth. Yeah. yeah. It might, and we can also look at the sample. And that's where the porch was. The wrap. It yes, it was on seventeenth right there. Yeah. It's right Close. half, and then it wraps around the Highland. Yeah. 
So it's, you know, it might be set, set back somewhat from where it is, but um, we can look at that for sure. Hmm. It's definitely interesting. Yeah. Does anybody else have any other thoughts on this one? Are y'all interested in visiting or? Yeah, I'd love to visit. I look forward to it. Cool. Great. Me too. Yeah, yeah I, I think... would be interested too. Okay. Yeah, I think it's definitely, um, um, you know, to kind of see what the challenges that will be faced um, and that, you know, the challenges that are faced in, in Fort Sanders, I think it's important for other people that don't walk by it regularly to see it because this is, uh, it's unique and the position is unique too with it right on uh, 17th and Highland. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so yeah, yeah that's a uh, very, very interesting home and the brick at not being, you know, an apartment building. Um, you know, we see we see brick in the neighborhood, but it's a lot of, uh, you know, normally it's more typical on, on apartment building uh, construction from, from this era and just a little bit later. So mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, this is uh, quite the project, Mr. Holmes. <laughs> oh, we I appreciate you. I the fun ones. <laughs> you do. <laughs> yeah, you really, you have a, you have a, um, a lot of, energy for uh, unique projects. Definitely. We appreciate the opportunity to see it early too. Yes. Yeah, and I think it'd be good for everybody to see the condition inside. So we, we've mm -hmm. got probably two more weeks of just, you know, getting the plaster off the walls and the junk out to where it's really worth going to see. Okay. That would be great. Yeah. That's good. Well. That'll help us with timing and scheduling too, so. And I think what Lori said was important too. I mean, we can see this house um, has not received, uh, you know, a lot of care in the over the course of the last decades, and um, and so you know your work to help keep a house standing um, in this neighborhood is uh, is definitely appreciated. And I appreciate you coming to um, the commission, um, you know, before. Um, and, it it and actually really does have a condemnation and a demolition order on it, so those are paused at the moment mm -hmm. yeah there's some major codes enforcement issues there too so all right well john you have any other questions or thoughts no uh just give me what time works and like i said two weeks anytime after two weeks for today we should be good to go and we'll make a time work okay well, thank you guys. Thank you, John. And thank you all for really making it through this one. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. I think we're done. Lindsay, any um, idea you think will be virtual next month? We can continue virtual or you heard anything? I, don't, I haven't gotten confirmation one way or the other. Mike told the design review board last night that we would probably be back in person. So um, that might be the case. I, I, they haven't made a decision for planning commission yet. And then, mm -hmm. you know, we've been kind of following all, the, all that one since it's more major, um, but I'll definitely keep you guys posted the first time I hear some, something. It's been a real, it's an interest. I went to a, uh, there was a webinar about preservation commissions, like virtual meetings and um, it's, it's been interesting to see such a learning experience and like what's been easier for people. I'll send you guys the link to that if you want to read on it because it was pretty good to see. Um, but I'll be happy I to see. I think it's worked virtually. I, I, I wonder if public involvement is easier in person. Yeah. But um, so I wonder if we hinder that a little bit, but, um, but yeah, I think it's worked. Yeah, yeah, it's tough because it, you know, and on one hand, it, it could be easier for people. Somebody in this webinar, the yeah. uh, historic zoning staff for Nashville was talking and she was like, people, our meetings are three to five hours and they're in the middle of the day in downtown Nashville and people have tr trouble getting here. So like having access digitally is helpful. But then on the other hand, you know, some people have technological struggles. Right, and, right. You know, right. it's been interesting. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you guys. I really appreciate you all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good to see, see you next time. Here. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.